Well, that huge roar you've just heard is the sound of the Ballyclare and Clare Valley fans welcoming their two teams out onto the pitch for this Energia Junior Cup All-Ireland Final between these two Ulster outfits. You are very welcome to Kingspan Stadium for this showdown between these two Ulster clubs. First time in the history of the Energia All-Ireland Junior Club final that two Ulster sides will meet each other hence the choice of venue Clare Valley are already set to go the roar from their team as they broke out of their huddle Bally Clare in no rush to break out of theirs man in the middle Limerick referee Porrick Reedy checking his watch and suggesting that perhaps these two teams should get in position it's a fine crowd at the Kingspan Stadium. They'll be making their voices heard throughout this. What should be a ding-dong contest. And plenty of banter in that far stand between the two sets of fans, suggesting that this one will be a spicy affair. The kickoff is from the Ballyclare out half. Matthew McDowell dropping it deep into the Clare Valley 22 carried well to the edge of the 22 Clare Valley in possession Matthew Bothwell is surely going to box kick clear from the edge of the 22 puts some distance on it and into touch it goes just shy of the 10 metre line far side of the pitch from our commentary position and a fine first exit the cheer is from the Paddy Clare fans who get their first attacking opportunity of this game from their first set piece. You expect a certain amount of nerves in games like this. First team to make a mistake. First team to get their set piece right. First team to get their name on the scoreboard. It's really well taken in the middle of that lineout from Bally Clare, who bring it into midfield and carry heavy into the Clare defence, making yards in the tackle. Another huge carry. That one from Joshua Young. Step back inside and Clare Valley are scrambling to contain as Bally Clare go to the second layer. Another big carry into traffic. From the bottom, James Creighton. Creighton again, he's so quick to those early rocks as Bally Clare go out the back and look to try and stretch the Clare Valley defence. Straightening up in contact and they are making yards coast to coast they've gone one side to the other and the ball knocked on and the referee says knocked backwards and so Bally Clare continued to hold it and look to break through the defensive line Clare Valley str scrambling back to contain Bally Clare of a player stood up and it looks as though that's going to be brought into the mall and it is Matthew Bothwell with the feed Scrum goes down, referee says that's a penalty. You can hear the Paddy Clare fans voicing their disagreement with that decision from Paul Greedy. And David Maxwell will have the opportunity to take Clare Valley out of their half for the first time since the game kicked off. Take the play up to the 10 meter line inside the Paddy Clare half. And the first set piece opportunity for Kyle Cobain into that Clare Valley line out. Slowly making their way to it. Big throw from Cobain, taken really well at the back, and Clare Valley looked to set up and go. Really well organised defence at the tail of that uh, line out from Bally Clare. Clare Valley still have Bothwell into midfield. Looking to reverse his direction. Door closed in his face. Really well done. Bally Clare shutting that door. Ewan Hare had done well. And Clare Valley looked to come down on that far side. And unfortunately a forward pass. Poor Agridi in the middle. Quick to that one. Just as Clare Valley looked to get themselves going. <laughs> yeah. You have to feel as though the fans are going to have some kind of a say in this game as it goes on. Plenty of noise 
from the grandstand at the Kingspan Stadium. First blood in the scrums did go to Claher Valley, winning a scrum penalty just outside their own 22. And Bally Clare will look to get on even terms and force some possession from inside their own half. The feed from James Creighton. Bally Clare scrum going backwards, and that's another penalty to Claher Valley. Two out of two for the Valley team. And between the 10 and the 22, well, I was going to say they might fancy a kick at goal, but David Maxwell has made his mind up. He's going straight into that corner. And he has kicked that dead. Well, that's an unfortunate, unforced error from the Clare Valley out half. There will be a scrum from where the penalty kick was taken. And for the two scrums we've seen so far, you have to wonder if that's any advantage to the Paddy Clare pack. They will want an opportunity to try and settle the score, even things out a little bit, and perhaps create a better picture for the referee. Creighton has ball in hand. He'll want it in and out quite quickly. That is a better scrum from Bally Clare, and they take it from the back really well carried from Jack Gamble, but brought down. And back it goes into the hands of Matthew McDowell, and the McDowell's kick is dropping at the 10. Hare with a little step back inside, and he's brought to ground at the halfway line. Clara Valley not resourcing the ruck, but uh, Bally Clare happy to let them have it and come up quick with the defensive effort. Matthew Bothwell into midfield. Bally Clare having to reset their defensive line. Lovely pass to the tight head, Neil Henderson. And Clare Valley are losing yards now. Bally Clare's defence has done really well to come up quick and force possession backwards. Step back inside. That's a lovely little step from David Stinson to try and make some yards back for the Clare Valley men. Thrown in midfield and it's loose and taken back on the Bally Clare side. Advantage being played for the knock on. Looking for options back in midfield. Spun into centre and the attempted kick through is going to bounce around the 22 over the head of Hare and then kicked clear. Bouncing into touch, a super clearing kick. And Clare Valley taking the possession to halfway between the 10 and the 22. Line out is taken quickly and the kick returned. Aimed at Hare who collects in the backfield for Clare Valley. Popping inside to his out half, David Maxwell. And Maxwell kicks that one beautifully towards the touch, but doesn't make it into touch. And Bally Clare looking to go through some phases. Massive tackle on the far side. Huge hit as the Clare Valley kick chasers came up to put pressure. Bally Clare still have it. James Creighton wants it out. Popping outside. Good contest. Possession retained. And yards being made up towards the 10. Pass is dropped deep for McDowell. McDowell puts his boot on it. All the way into the backfield and Clare Valley will have to build from the edge of their 22 yet again. They've played a lot of the game from this place but they got the strike runners here and they look like they have and it's a super pass outside. Lovely little dink through. Just about collected. That was Paul Armstrong and Armstrong's kick chase. Absolutely slaughtering Matthew McDowell at the edge of his own 22. Really good work from Armstrong. Bally Clare now inside their own 22 and looking to carry out. Doing well to get their hands on that and playing into midfield. They're narrow in midfield, though they're going to have to stay narrow and try and resource this ruck. A long clearing kick into the arms of Hare. He's been safe under those kicks three times out of three so far and looking to return. A run with some interest, but the door closed right in his face. That's a huge hit. Bally Clare said they had got hands on it, and they have turned that one over in midfield and look to try and use that possession to gain some momentum. And this time around, having turned the ball over, it's turned back for holding on on the ground. And that is really, really unfortunate for a Bally Clare.
Well, possession changing hands a couple of times. From both sides, and eventually the advantage is to Clara Valley and David Maxwell taking them up to between the, the 10 and the 22, far side of the pitch. Another opportunity for Kyle Cobain to throw in to this Clare Valley set piece. The referee urging the teams, in particular Clare Valley, to make their way to their line-out position. Cobain throws to the tail, really well collected and popped into midfield. Huge carry up towards the 22. Clare Valley making yards in the contact to ground. They go inside the Ballyclear 22. Pass it to Cobain and he's absolutely smothered by defenders. The Valley team still have it. To the edge of the 22. Still no score in this game. First blood waiting. Big tackle in midfield. Likely to knock the stuffing out of a team, but Clara Valley still come. A lovely pass back inside. The carry looked like there was a gap opening up, but the door closed. And Paul Agrini has his arm up. Another penalty conceded from Bally Clare. This inside the 22. This the most kickable. But it looks as though David Maxwell is absolutely on a mission. This time he does not miss his line out kick. And so a five meter line out. And this is the first real red zone attack for either team. If Kyle Cobain can hit his man here, Valley Clare will have work to do to keep Clore Valley out. To the tail it goes again, really well taken. And the mall is set up and a good sack, but the referee says that's crooked. Into the line out. And that is twice that Clara Valley managed to earn themselves penalties, put themselves in a position to attack that Bally Clear line. Two opportunities wasted. Bally Clear getting out of jail somewhat. Creighton will feed. Clore Valley put the pressure on. Gamble takes it out the back and pops it up. And Bally Clare making yards in that contact. That's a really good drive to give them some space for a clean exit. Matthew McDowell puts his boot on it. Gets absolute the maximum out of that. A super exit kick for Bally Clare, taking them past the 10 meter line. And uh, an out half with that kind of range. Is a real asset defensively. So you say just a little bit of nerves from both sides, a little tetchy at the start. Into midfield, Clar Valley go looking to carry, and that's a big one from Reese Smyton, older brother of Callum. As Clare Valley look to move it towards the wing, spilled and knocked forward from Smyton. And so another scrum to Bally Clare. Conceded penalties on the first two, they've tidied up somewhat since then. They look to be absorbing some of that Clare Valley pressure, and getting the ball out quick. Jack Gamble offering himself as a carrying option on a two occasions so far and getting some change out of it too. Still awaiting the scores first game and you wonder will Clare Valley come to regret turning down three points on three separate occasions so far. Creighton with the feed. Scrum is steady. Popped up really well passed and really well collected. Critton's at the bottom again and popping into midfield. Bally Clare still have 
Big boot from McDowell. It's going to drop around the edge of the 22. And it's really well collected from here in the backfield, looking to tear his way free. He does so, but is hauled down. Ball is out the back and spill forward. And Ballyclare turned it around. And the referee says, no, you're offside. And Ballyclare was sniffing something there. And expecting that they had the opportunity. Paul McGreedy says otherwise. David Maxwell gets a big penalty kick back up to that 10 meter line. And once again, Kyle Cobain will be asked to hit his man and set up another attacking opportunity to the tail it goes really well collected at the back from Neil Henderson and into midfield Clover Valley go Valley clear looking to get men over but they can't switching sides and it's come back inside and Hare uh, is absolutely gobbled up but Clover Valley still managed to hold on to the ball ping-ponging around Henderson throws back into the backfield but it's a poor throw Armstrong done really well to collect that and a penalty conceded well, the pass from Henderson was a little bit wayward and Clover Valley couldn't get themselves back in contention. Jack Campbell congratulating his team and this one over the 10, middle of the park, looks like a prime opportunity. <laughs> and as I speak, Matthew McDowell is going to go down the line. Absolutely nobody interested in the posts in this energy all-Ireland Junior Cup final and so Ballyclear and Matthew Coulter will have the chance to throw in and give Ballyclear a platform inside Clover Valley 22 can they get more out of their set piece than Clover Valley have been able to to the middle really well set up the mall starts to move the crowd urge them to heave it's rolling to the left and it is going forward and eventually breaking from the back and into midfield. Popped up really well taken into contact. Slow coming back. Clara Valley look organised, waiting for the Valley Clare players to come to them. And a penalty conceded, not rolling away. Through the sticks it goes. And that is first blood. Just shy of 20 minutes played. Valley Clare lead Clare Valley by three points to nil. <laughs> Maxwell's kickoff dropping inside the, just outside the Valley Clare 22, really well collected. Quite athletically. And Creighton with the box kick. It's not going to travel far, but it's really well collected and then spilled forward. And suddenly Matthew Bothwell is looking to get this Clare Valley attack going. And here, slicing this way and that. Pass three, popping it back inside. Armstrong into the 22. He's hauled down. And advantage is coming. There's surely going to be a penalty advantage, a potential yellow card. A little dink through. It's being chased back. And is that a try? No, it's not. It looked for all the world as though Clare Valley had that ball down. Poor Greedy says it's not scored. Playing at second centre. Well, it clips the posts on its way through. Plenty of power on it. And perhaps just a shade lucky to come inside that post for a finish. But that levels the scores at three apiece. And you'd have to say on the balance of things, it's no more than Clare Valley deserve for the territory they've had so far in this game. Kickoff drops into the Clare Valley 22 and carrying back out with menace and intent. Paddy Clare closing the door, pop-up pass from Bothwell into midfield. Switching the point of attack now, looking to come back onto the inside midfield channels. 
plenty of Clare Valley players out wide if they can spread it and they can going through the hands Armstrong lovely little pass outside eventually gobbled up in the tackle was Stuart Brown it's an awkward wayward pass it's been knocked on and Bally Clare take possession inside the Clare Valley half coming onto this wing on this side lovely little pop up pass Clare Valley closing the door a huge tackle from Callum Smyton a big carry from Dean Jones there's a lot going on in this game it's back and forth there's big carries big tackles Gamble hired into that Clare Valley defence Bally Clare with a lovely little reverse pass back inside and they're looking to get some ball moving into midfield no lack of aggressive runners plenty of them all over the park going deep to the second layer this time round and is there an opportunity to get the ball away it's popped up but eventually a door closed and Paul Greedy says no advantage has come there was a penalty advantage for not rolling away and so Bally Clare will have the penalty it's halfway between the 10 and the 22 and left footed kicker Pulls that one to the right and wide. And that's an unfortunate one for Ballyclear. The scores remain 3-3. This one, you just have a feeling it's going to be close all the way to the end. drop kick from the 22 drops into the hands of Gamble Creighton into midfield a lovely step back inside and a gap opening up the pass, pass has popped up a lovely little step inside from Playfair Ballyclare have numbers up if they can get the ball out really excellent tackle on that far side to slow the momentum there were options outside the tackle putting an end to that and it's slowed the momentum somewhat for the Ballyclare team still on the attack that was a lovely little play inside it was Ross Johnston I'm sorry on the carry now Campbell stepping breaking through one and then two others Hall to ground Ballyclare want ball in hand it's slow it's not sticking but they still have Clare Valley looking to get players over they need a scrum half what they get is a centre with Matthew McCullough goes in to play nine and pops up and now Ballyclare looking to get some forward momentum and they've got it slow coming back another penalty advantage coming a third one for not rolling away against Clare Valley and so this is a, a play for nothing and an opportunity to get at that Clare Valley line super defensive work to stop Ballyclare at the gain line the little dink over the top who's going to get hands on it really well collected well, it was a play to nothing. They had it for free because of the penalty advantage. Straight through the posts. Six points to three. Now well, we've seen replacements on uh, both front rows already. Jack Black has come out for Barry Clare. Richard Lutton coming in to replace him. Neil Henderson has come out for Clover Valley really big carry from Ross Johnston looking for that forward momentum Barry Clare looking to clear their lines huge kick once again from McDowell he's got range on that boot really well collected in the backfield and a rampaging run from Callum Smyton and it looks like a little gap maybe there the attempted pop pass almost caught in midfield and it does enough to take some of the momentum there is a knock on advantage coming for Clover Valley as Hare looks to step inside and out he's broken through two tackles and looks to race away is there an option for him there was one on his right shoulder he couldn't get over to have a look and the referee says no advantage coming for the knock on back at the halfway line well you have to say Ewan Hare looks tremendously threatening whenever he gets his hands on that ball pivoting out of tackles making yards He's uh, a couple of times been one player away from breaking free.
And so, Matthew Bothwell, with ball in hand, prepares to feed into the scrum. Steady scrum from both sides. Clara Valley making yards. Bora Greedy says, no, no, that's a little messy, guys. We've both gone down and we will reset. James Creighton and Matthew Bothwell having little chats as the scrums are settling. Times like this, you wouldn't mind an old player mic out on the pitch. Bothwell feeds, and it's a bally clear penalty this time around. A bind has been dropped. And that uh, real unfortunate for Richard Primrose, the Clare Valley substitute, who's come in for Neil Henderson. Matthew McDowell gets yards and yards out of that. That's a super penalty from inside his own half to inside the Clare Valley 22. That's 6-3, game in the balance, but Barry Clare with an opportunity to get at this Clare Valley defense. To the tail it goes, really well taken. Maul is set up in midfield. Clare Valley's defensive work is excellent. They've managed to slow that down, but not enough. Ballyclare keep their shape, and they've done really well to do so in recycling ball in midfield. They still have this. It's still the same ball to the right-hand side of the posts. And it's going to be a penalty advantage. Ball goes to the deck. Ball is there. This is a play for free. There are numbers outside. Lovely little chip pass across. Collected and spilled forward. And it looked as though the try was absolutely begging for them. A super crossfield kick from Matthew McDowell. And a really unfortunate spill from Mark Jackson inside the goal area. But the penalty advantage was coming and McDowell really does have some excellent control with his boot on that ball. This time they opt not to go for the sticks. 6-3 it remains. But with the mall in the shape that it's in, managing to hold its shape like they did on that last phase, you'd have to fancy Barry Clare to make some inroads here. Matthew Coulter will feed. This time they go to the middle. Clare Valley were waiting, but can they stop them? The referee says that's once. It's still got good shape. They drive towards the line. And there's a penalty advantage coming again. So yet another play for nothing. And McDowell is going to try another crossfield kick. It's a long one towards the touchline. It's really well collected. And that is a superb score. An outstanding try from Scott Martin, who's taken that ball magnificently, plucking it out of the sky from a crossfield kick for McDowell. And a superb score for Bally Clare on the free play. An outstanding try in this Energy All-Ireland Junior Cup final. Scott Martin will be delighted fielding that ball and getting that onto the ground. Super try for Ballyclare. The conversion is far from routine for a left-footed kicker. It hangs and it just drifts right. Clare Valley will want to make the next score theirs try and tighten this game, keep it close. Dropping outside between the 10 and the 22 and there's a knock-on advantage coming to Clare Valley. Matthew Bothwell into midfield, well carried. Players offering themselves for Bothwell. Valley Clare quick to close the door. The Clare Valley players are lining up and that's a huge smash through the tackle and over the gain line. And Clare Valley want to move it back in to the midfield. Lovely carry from Lutton. Excuse me, from Primrose. 
And the opportunity for Hare spinning it. And a little fend up towards the 22 Clare Valley move. Into midfield again. And it's a lovely little pick from the back and a little snipe from Ballyclare scrambling to haul down ball carriers. Keeping it tight, lovely pop up, Primrose popping it back. Clare Valley offering players and keeping it tight. The numbers are on the right hand side. Ball skipping one player, bouncing loose but recollected. And it looks as though there's an advantage coming for Clare Valley at the edge of the 22. Lovely little offload out towards the wing, it goes. And brought into touch. The referee says no, no advantage accruing. And so we're coming back for a penalty. One of the Bally player, Bally Clare players going off their feet at the edge of the 22. David Maxwell puts his boot on it. And an opportunity for Clara Valley to cut that gap. It's eight points between them at the moment. Bally Clare have taken their opportunities when they've come their way. To the front it goes. Maul is set up. Bally Clare's Maul defence is good on the initial shove, but well controlled from Clara Valley, and they're starting to make some yards. Eventually they come to a halt. Into midfield they've had to go. And now staying tight again. They're looking really good on this phase play when they keep it tight and narrow. Up to four metres short and making yards on that tight carry. To the right side they go. Plenty of players offering. There'll be no shortage of men eager to get over that line. Still short by about a metre. A penalty advantage coming for offside. And that was really tight, grueling stuff. The offside decision. And once again, will they go for that corner or perhaps the penalty considering they've had quite a bit of advantage in that and they are going to go for the scrum. They haven't used a whole lot of width, Clare Valley. They haven't needed to. Keeping it tight has made them yards, but they're yet to cross that whitewash. Five metres out with a scrum that looks like it's hungry. And an opportunity for Matthew Bothwell to feed in. And can Clare Valley make some yards? It's taken from the back, popped up. Really big carry, heading towards the corner. Just about stopped. Bothwell wants ball quick. It's slow instead. But there are willing carriers lining up. They stay going narrow. And the ball has been knocked on. A huge cheer from the Bally Clare supporters. They know they were under pressure in those last few phases. And having managed to just about keep Clare Valley out, that sees them all the way to half time. They'll be delighted to get the break. 11-3 was the scoreline. It doesn't tell the story of a game that started with Clare Valley really getting at the Baddy Clare defence, spurning several penalty opportunities at the posts for shots into the corner, which didn't work out. And there was a trading of penalties from Paul Armstrong and from Mark Jackson before a magnificent try from Scott Martin to give Bally Clare the lead. The Clare Valley kick off, and with the very first kick off, there's a knock on on the first opportunity for Clare Valley to attack. And not for the first time, Matthew Bothwell and James Creighton, the two scrum halves, exchange words with each other on the pitch. Been trying to one up each other. It's been a great contest to watch between two fine scrum halves. And indeed, the out half game has also been excellent. Matthew McDowell's range and control is excellent, as is David Maxwell's. Into midfield from the scrum, and Clara Valley looking to spread the ball all the way out into the hands 
a really well taken from Regan Wilkinson into the Ballyclare 22. Lovely little step back inside from Callum Smyton. Bothwell into midfield, Armstrong with a pop up. There are options showing for him. To the deck it goes, it's slow coming back. Eventually Bothwell gets his hands on it. Primrose with the carry and making yards but eventually put backwards. It's a big carry from the substitute, tight head. Ali Clare quick to close the door, but Clare Valley will be happy to keep moving that ball and hold possession and make the yards. Slowly but surely edging towards the line. And the pass is wayward. It's loose and knocked up. And suddenly there's an attacking opportunity on. Stepping this way and that and a big, big carry into midfield. Is there going to be runners outside or inside? And a little breakaway. The ball squirts loose, bouncing. Collected at the edge of the 22. Bally Clare have gone from their own 22 all the way to the far end. And then eventually holding on on the ground. And it looked as though the try line was begging huge carry all the way up the pitch from Joel McBride and it looked as though nobody was going to bring him to ground the ball eventually squirting loose as he looked to offload on his right shoulder penalty conceded Clare Valley get out of jail somewhat and cleared up towards the between the 10 and the halfway line James Creighton pleading his case with the touch judge Clare Valley, ball in the hands of Kyle Cobain. Looking to attack again, this time from inside their own half. Stolen in the middle of the line out, really well done from Bally Clare, getting up to interfere with that Clare Valley set piece into midfield and a big carry eventually brought to ground. And another penalty conceded for holding on. And it looked like an excellent carry from Ross Johnston but once he went to deck there were green jerseys waiting to get on him and a clearing kick from David Maxwell takes Clare Valley to the 10 inside the Ballyclare half in the first half Kyle Cobain threw one crooked but other than that his line out throwing was outstanding and it is once again secure and into midfield and players showing in options for Clara Valley, but it's overthrown as it heads towards the wing. Eventually collected, a knock-on advantage coming, popped up on the outside and into touch. No advantage, but there was a knock-on in midfield. And so Clara Valley will have the put into the scrum. On the balance, they've shaded these scrum battles of Clare Valley though as the game has progressed Dean Jones Matthew Coulter and replacement Richard Lutton have shored up that Valley Clare front row adding more stability Bothwell with the feed Bally Clare get a shove on and really start to make some yards and that's the massive scrum penalty for the side in the lead they really just attacked at the right moment got the squeeze on and shoved Clare Valley and uh, in the opening moments of the second half it's really not going the way of the men in green the penalty kick from McDowell doesn't make touch the returning kick drops at the 10 inside the Bally Clare half out to the back it goes will they kick or spin wide out wide it goes and a lovely little kick through it's going to bounce into touch around the five meter line an outstanding kick once again from Joel McBride who went down that rampage early on in the second half And that was indeed a 50-22. McBride's kick just shy of the halfway line, meaning that Bally Clare having an opportunity here to turn the screw. It's a shame we don't have a replay to look at that one. 
what a kick from McBride to the tail really well taken Barry Clare setting up that maul again it was a weapon in the first half they're looking to use it again over the line they go and it's down on the ground the referee says no nope, held up well that is outstanding last second defence from the Clare Valley number four Eugene McKenna Barry Clare denied an opportunity the drop kick out to the edge of the 22 a little show and go back in towards midfield Barry Clare can sense blood they're starting to put some attacks together it's clicking for them a little bit easier it seems at the moment no doubt Clara Valley will have a purple patch again but right now it's Barry Clare all the way and Gamble stepping back inside and making yards in the tackle popped into midfield lovely little pass from Creighton runners on the diagonal that one looked like Ross Johnston options left and right first right and then back in left Gamble yet again offering himself a willing runner the number eight Creighton lovely pop-up pass and once again Barry Clare make yards and options now left and right they keep it tight heading towards that post and they're over the line it looked as though the ball just skittered loose and a try scored but Paul Greedy says no 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 I've just had a little look and I don't like it and Aaron Playfair had managed to collect that ball at the bottom of that rock and dive over the line but Paul Greedy says ah 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 back you come clearing kick takes Clara Valley out of their own 22 and they will really want to get a grip on this game as soon as they can hasn't clicked for them yet in this half throw is to the middle taken off the top into midfield looking to put some width on a lovely step back inside but Barry Clare there to close the door trying to stand a man up lovely looping pass it was almost intercepted but Clare Valley have and heading down that far touchline eventually brought to ground and the ball has been knocked on and turned over well they've done so well to make the yards and now they're defending again Creighton feeds Bally Clare getting that shove on yet again he might have done well to leave it in but it's popped out instead carried well from McDowell Creighton looking for midfield options he has plenty of them Bally Clare looking to spread wide the Clare Valley defence is quick up McBride on the carry again huge the number 13 in this second half so far on the carry was Johnston Bally Clare with options and runners willing pop pass heading towards that touchline step back inside door closed outside the Clare Valley 22 it's dirty ball but it is retained by Bally Clare and they look to push this Clare Valley defensive line back lost some yards from the last point of contact quick feet popped back inside is McBride going to go on another run again to ground he goes and it looks as though the ball has been turned over a super punch a lovely jackal on the ground and eventually hacked clear the ball bouncing up hitting Scott Martin in the face but uh, he manages to collect and starts a run towards his own 10 gobbled up Armstrong calling for players to defend the backfield Valley Clare though looking to go through the hands with Gamble up towards the 10 heavy clear out all options are on this side and eventually the kick dropping at the 10 controlled by the boot of Armstrong and Armstrong looking to get an attack moving from Clara Valley a lovely little hands up no look pass but doesn't go to hand stepping this way and that big carry from Callum Smyton ball 
poached on the ground from Ballyclare. They've managed to turn that over. They've done really, really well. And Creighton into midfield. They want to move this ball wide. And McDowell says, nope, I'll just put it in behind and try and bounce it into touch. It won't find touch. And instead, into the hands of Hare. Ewan Hare with a lovely pass on the outside. And there is some grass to run into. And Clare Valley start to make some yards and just into touch on the far side of the pitch. An attempted little dink through and the player dragged into touch between the 10 and the halfway line. Andrew Hare set his winger free and it looked as though there was green grass to go at. And a knock on on the attempted kick through as the player was put into touch. Bally Clare opt for the scrum just inside their own half. Creighton with the feed. Steady on both sides. Into midfield. McDowell, show and go, and he's knocked it on. And now there's an opportunity for Crawher, Crawher Valley to get up and attack. And a lovely front from the back row forward. The ball dribbling into touch just outside the 22. And they needed that little rub of the green, the little bounce of the ball they weren't getting it in the opening minutes of the second half perhaps now starting to turn their luck a little bit Clare Valley can they put pressure on this Ballyclare line out, just outside the Ballyclare 22, to the middle it goes, really well taken from the men in red, yellow and black and Creighton eventually with the box kick, dropping at the halfway line, not collected spilling loose, but Hare gets his hands on it Backwards it went, not forwards. And Clare Valley still have coming down this blind side, and is Armstrong going to kick? No, he puts it to hand, and eventually there's some space, and really space opening up, smashing through tackles and heading towards the 22. Clare Valley now building some momentum into midfield, stepping back inside. There are plenty of red jerseys rushing up to close the door. We haven't had a score in this half yet. Clare Valley wanted to be theirs. The referee says, hang on just a minute. Clare Valley setting up their attack and looking to make some momentum in this half. Still neither side managing to move the scoreboard just yet. You just feel as though Clare Valley need a score to cut this gap if Ballyclare score next that gap may be too large to overcome and a huge crowd roar as Ballyclare managed to get over that with a big jackal that were two or three players including Campbell in the mix with their hands around that ball And an outstanding clearing kick for Matthew McDowell. The Bally clear out half has been at the heart of much that was good about Bally clear today. Control with the boot. To the tail, the line out goes off the top and into midfield. Campbell is offered. As a carrier into traffic he goes. Ballyclare want that ball back, but Campbell was isolated. And not enough players in red jerseys around to protect him. Clara Valley turn that over. Penalties traded over three or four phases. And an outstanding return kick. Well, you have to say both our halves really have been excellent in terms of their control with the ball from the boot. Now 
Cobain will have the opportunity to try and set Clare Valley on their way. To the tail, really well taken off the top. The sack is good, but it's loose and torn up the field. Clare Valley go. They want a ball quick and they get it quick into midfield. Massive carry, huge collision. That one from Reese Smyton. Looking to wriggle their way clear. Clare Valley have numbers, Ballyclare look like they're waiting and here, tearing into that first contact. Pop-up pass is good, yard still being made by Clare Valley. It's slow coming back and Ballyclare look well organized. Lovely little show and go from Armstrong. Ball is thrown back and collected from David Maxwell. And turned over, Ballyclare really good at interfering and making no ball easy for Clare Valley and uh, free for all on the ground and Clare Valley thought they had their hands on it, Paddy Clear do well just to clean it up, pick and go, ball stripped loose, Clare Valley have ripped in the tackle. Into midfield, it's slow ball from Clare Valley when they want it to be quicker, they need it to be more aggressive. Hint of offside, lovely pop-up pass. Through the hands, Clare Valley staying narrow, looking to get over and protect the ball they have. That's much quicker ball for them, and that will suit them better. Now they have numbers if they want to, Maxwell goes, and he's brought to ground. Another little show and go, that one from Bothwell. Keeping the body clear defence honest as Clare Valley look to use some possession. They still have a big counter ruck, but it's not enough to turn over ball. Clare Valley heading towards the Ballyclare 22, far side of the pitch. One out runner is popping up. Was that knocked on? It was. And it all just feels a little bit forced. And the longer this clock ticks, the more Clare Valley will have to force it the happier body clear would be to let them have the ball. As the teams start to go to their subs benches, freshening some legs. It'll be crucial in the remaining 15 minutes or so of this game. Only eight points in it, 11-3. But that does, obviously enough, make it a two-score game. And that is the challenge for Clare Valley, who really were threatening the Ballyclare red zone in the first half, and haven't managed to put themselves in a position to do so in this half. Scrum is good, and ball into midfield is good, and it's quicker for Ballyclare than it is for Clare Valley, and that's a big kick from McDowell again, dropping at the halfway line, and really, really well collected in the air from Regan Wilkinson. And Hare starts to go, Hare with the pop-up pass, Armstrong, is he gonna go to ground and popped up eventually? Well now Troy Line was begging, it was a super tap tackle to bring Armstrong to the ground when a try looked like it might be on. Hare once again with that threat, Lovely carry from the hooker, Kyle Cobain. And Armstrong, who's offered himself as a runner so many times in this game, only to have the door closed in his face. Here with another carry, and this time he pops it up. Clare Valley have had lots of ball in these last few minutes. They're going to need to turn that possession into some real opportunities and so far they haven't been able to do that. Armstrong going this way and then going that, looking for the gap. To the ground it goes. And out towards the wing. Lovely little hands and a little shuffle on the ground. The ball, is it turned over? No, it squirts out the back. 
Really excellent work from Scott Martin, who had that tap tackle to stop Armstrong when the opportunity was begging and there's a penalty coming and it's tapped quick and they go and Raleigh start to head towards the Bally Clear try line. You wonder if perhaps the tap tackle wasn't enough and the referee is going to go to the pocket and this might very well be a huge, huge moment in this game of rugby. A yellow card for the substitute, Adam Barron. The kick is into the corner from David Maxwell. And as in the first half, an attacking platform, an extra player to boost to the front. Clara Valley look to set up their mall, and they do, and they start to roll and start to head towards that Ballyclare line. It's a long, stretched looking mall, but it's making yards. The Clare Valley crowd urging their team forward. They still have that ball. Pora Greedy says that's once. And towards the line they go. And the ball has been knocked on. Knocked on, going over the line. Really unfortunate. Kyle Cobain was at the back with his hands on it. And knocked on, not Kyle Cobain, excuse me. That one, Aaron Dunwoody. Now, still plenty of work to be done. We've over 10 minutes left to go. Barney Clare will be in no rush to put this ball into the scrum. A man down. Big shove from Clare Valley. Really well controlled at the back from the Barney Clare men. And eventually they manage, well I was going to say to clear their lines but the clearance kick is skewed. And we're still nine metres from that Bally Clare line and an opportunity to go back to that mall that looked so effective last time. To the front yet again, the crooked in. And that an unfortunate set piece error and so another scrum opportunity and another chance for Paddy Clare to clear their lines and also eat some more of that sin bin clock feed Patterson big shove from Clare Valley and Valley Clare do well to hold on to that ball and carry out and make a yard or two while they're at it back into the hands of McDowell and McDowell this time gets everything out of that dropping it at the 10 inside their own half Hare looking for the gap to go through and he shoots and the door closed in his face after beating one defender towards the blind and a lovely little dink over the top and unfortunately it bounces on the whitewash and that means straight into touch really unfortunate it was a super dinked kick from Matthew Bothwell and by the finest of margins it goes straight in Matthew Coulter heads towards the tail it's sloppy but it is collected by Bally Clare. This is where they want to be. Patterson. Excuse me, that's uh, Angus Robson. Robson with the kick, and it's returned really well from Wilkinson. Into midfield, Clare Valley go, and it looks like they'll have numbers if they can move this ball, and they can. And if they head towards the touchline, 
over the 10 and to ground they go. It looked like there might have been numbers down that blind side. Slow coming back. Bothwell spilled and left behind. Clara Valley have to regroup at the halfway line. Ballyclare have really answered a lot of questions defensively in this game, but there's still time and there will still be questions to ask here with the tip on pass. Goes to nobody, but their stack, this attack is still on. Lovely rampaging run from David Sharkey. And this little dink over the top for runners to chase. It's a super little kick over the top from Maxwell. The clearing kick back up towards the halfway line collected by Paul Armstrong who sets off yet again he's going to be hard to stop little reverse flick pass does eventually go to hand but it's uncontrolled possession from Clare Valley they look threatening they have looked threatening on several occasions but it just seems to be that the passes won't stick an inch here an inch there It's a big round of applause and chance of Dino, Dino, Dino. As Dean Jones makes his way from the pitch to the appreciation of the Paddy Clare fans. What a shift the loose head has had so far in this game. Lovely little box kick from Robson. Clara Valley looking to build now from inside their own half and into the hands of Hare. Hare stepping inside, looks to be away. It's a super tackle, a super last minute tackle from McBride. Just about gets his fingers to the cloth of the jersey of Hare. You and Hare really is a trickster when he gets moving. Clara Valley needs something. And the mercurial fullback might very well be the man to provide. And it looks as though there is a penalty coming for not releasing a penalty, not entirely bought by Matthew Bothwell, but he certainly was keen to alert the referee to the infringement. The hallmark these days of a fine scrum half. The kick takes Clare Valley into Ballyclare territory. They still have a man advantage. They need to utilise that and cut the gap. The clock against them, eight points in it. To the tail, really well taken at the back. Through the hands in midfield, and it looks as though there will be options here. Two, all the way outside. It's a lovely pass, heading for the corner. All hold down. Regan Wilkinson was there. Angle lines waiting to carry into traffic. And a penalty coming for not releasing and not getting out of the way. And it's tapped and go. Clare Valley know they need a score and they need it soon. Down the blind side. There's three or four players in the way. And it looks as though they've bundled a player into touch. But there was... A penalty coming for not moving back 10. And another opportunity for Clare Valley. That was a huge carry from Rodney Bennett. Short range, he's going to be close to unstoppable. Bit of discussion amongst the Clare Valley players. Aaron Crawford, one of them to take that quick tap penalty and heading towards the line. They like it in tight and they're good at it in tight. Ballyclare scrambling to keep them out. They have numbers, can they get over the line? Just short. Is it gonna be there? It's not gonna be there. And out the back they go. Lovely little attempt from David Maxwell. The door closed on his face. Still there for Clare Valley. Pick heading to the line. Loads of red jerseys looking to get around it and get over it. 
retained and that's another penalty and perhaps poor Greedy is going to want a word with the Ballyclare men their third infringement in the space of a few minutes and if they're not careful there'll be a team down to 13 quick tap and go Clark head for the line short again ball is available snipe not there again with the drive still short and this time they're over and then it's a super score after five phases from the penalty driving over the line they refuse to be stopped and over they go listen to the roar from the Clare Valley fans Paul Armstrong wants this taken as quickly as he can Neil Henderson Armstrong sticks the extras it's 11-10 I said at the start of this game it was going to be close at the end one point in it kicked off into the Clare Valley 22 really well collected from Smyton bashing his way through two tackles and you sense now there's something energetic tails are up Clare Valley know there's very much in this game Botwell with a long box kick collected in backfield and a huge tackle and green jersey swarming forward and they get the penalty they get a penalty at the 10 inside the Bally clear half there were green jerseys materialized out of nowhere over that ball and Paul Armstrong is going to kick this one at the posts for an opportunity for Clare Valley to take the lead in the dying minutes of this match if they do it'll be the first time they'll have led in the whole game What a treat of a game of rugby we've had today. Paul Armstrong. Right hand side of the posts. Connects. It drops through and Clare Valley lead. Listen to the roar from the Clare Valley fans in the grandstand. And for the first time in this game, Clare Valley are ahead. Valley clear 11, Clare Valley 13, only minutes to go. Drops into the hands of Smyton. Reese, the older of the two. Matthew Bothwell, his box kick, led to the penalty the last time, dropping well and collected at the 10, and a super tackle from Wilkinson. And once again, green jerseys. But this time, Wilkinson, who's done so well, kicks the ball out of the rock and into touch. And a penalty for Ballyclare. And a chance for them to get up the field and attack, potentially retake their lead. Matthew McDowell's boot has been outstanding for the men in red so far today. He gets plenty out of that kick too. Now halfway between the, the 10 and the 22 in the Clare Valley half. Matthew Coulter. His throw was all the way to the tail and it's stolen at the back. The Clare Valley fans treat that steal like a score. And once again, Botwell with a big box kick. The chase from Wilkinson is excellent, but a lovely little wriggle free. A little kick over the top, collected by Sharkey, and Sharkey running into contact inside the body clear half. The attempted box kick, charged down, back to Hare. Hare with a big kick, but it goes straight into touch. And that means it's gonna be a put in to the line out for body clear at the 10 inside the Car Valley half. 
And I tell you, it feels like it's all happening now. Tighthead Jack Black is going to feed this line out. As Barry Clare look to flip this scoreline into the middle, it goes really well taken. And Robson has to go back into traffic. One out carries now as Barry Clare look to make some yards. Robson rushing in again, and they are making yards. Will they go wide? No, they keep it narrow and make the yards again. They need support players. They don't get him. And Claher Valley have managed to turn that ball over. Valley Clare holding on in the ground. Is that the moment that this energy of all Ireland Junior Cup final is won? David Maxwell kicks it to touch. And that is the moment. And it is the moment for Clare Valley. They trailed for most of this game and turned it on its head with only minutes to go, going from 11-3 down to 11-13 winners. Clare Valley have taken the day to the delight of their fans in this Energy All-Ireland Junior Cup final. What a result, what a game of rugby from the Kingspan Stadium. Thank you and have a lovely evening.